Are you in lockdown, unable to get to your horse, unable to get anywhere you want to go and still want to improve your riding? Well, come in, let's have a chat. Hey, you guys, I'm Superstars. Welcome to Dressage Mastery TV. And it's a little bit different today. So this is my home. And I thought I would love to do a DMA TV episode from home because I feel that's where most of us on the planet are at right now. And I just wanted to send you heaps of love and heaps of gratitude and heaps of encouragement wherever you are. I'm thinking of you, I'm loving you. And if there's anything you need, riding or not, just anything you need, please reach out. I'm here for you, I've got you. I'm here to support you through this. We're all stronger together. And I know the more I can help and the more I can be there for others, the more I'm going to be able to manage through as well. So super excited to support you on whatever's going on. But today, we probably can't get to our horses. I know some people can, some people can't. So I wanted to talk about what are some things that we can do to improve our riding. And I'm very, very excited to share. I've had something in my head. Ideas tend to kind of just sit in my head and percolate. And I've had this idea percolating for over three years on how we can improve our connection with ourselves, with our body, with our mind and with our spirit, that when we do that and take that connection to a whole new level, we can connect with our horse at a whole other level and take our entire riding performance through the roof. And I've been thinking and playing with it and percolating, like I said, for over three years and I've landed on it. It's called Equinection and I wanna share it with you guys today. So Equinection is based on who do you have to be in your body to improve your riding. So in our riding, we need to have a base level of fitness. Anyone who's done sitting trot, extended sitting trot across the diagonal or run through an entire dressage test knows we need to have a base level of fitness. Thank God, I bless the stars every day that we don't need a level of fitness that triathletes need, that marathon runners need, that extreme sports need because that's not my personality and that I'm just not a runner. <laughs> so the cardiovascular endurance I need for riding is a low requirement of fitness. Thank God. Like, let's just, just, let's just be happy about that. But it is still a requirement. I can't sit on the couch for the next 12 months and then expect to be able to ride a horse in sitting trot. I just won't have the fitness there. So I need to have a base level of fitness. I also need to have a base level of suppleness in my body. I need to first be able to move different parts of my body independently from each other. And I also need to have those body parts stretched and supple and working independent of each other so they can do what they need to do on the horse. I also need to try and even out all idiosyncrasies and unevenness in my body. If I tend to always sit to the right side and always sit on the right side of my body, where do you think my horse is gonna be stiff? And how do you think my horse is gonna go after carrying me where I put 75% of my weight always on the right. So I need to make sure that I'm even to therefore insist that my horse also be straight supple and even. So with that in mind, I'd love to show you a quick stretch uh, that can really open up your hips, which is a part where riders really get tight and really can get tight on one side more than the other, which obviously can cause imbalances everywhere. So let's get on the floor. Okay, so you wanna start off in tabletop position, which is a really cool position just to engage your core anyway. So think of each connected bits to the floor as a leg for your table. So you've got four legs to your table and make sure your table is nice and flat. Engage that core, push your belly button into your spine um, and suck, suck everything up and in. So you've really engaged that core. Okay, then you're just gonna push this, um, uh, we'll start with the left leg, me with my left and right. So we're gonna start here. Is this my left? Yeah. Okay, and we're gonna do a nice big hip circle. So go up and then as you come in, bring your knee in and then Stretch out and around. You should feel with every opening that you can just open that little bit more. And so when you feel that you've opened it out, then we're just gonna reverse it. So we're gonna go stretch out, oh God. And then you can really feel when you reverse it, really opens up that socket joint the other way. Take notice of what feels tight, what feels blocked, what feels open. Listen to your body. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna do our right leg, stretch it out and up and around. Up and around. And it's really interesting because on my right side, I feel it's a lot more flexible and open than it was on my left, which is interesting. 
So now let's reverse it, see how it feels on the reverse. Yeah, it's still way better on the right. And then he's on the left, which is really interesting. Sorry, horsies. <laughs> so think about what it is for you. Think about what, how you feel in your hips after doing this exercise and feel if one was tighter than the other. Maybe go back tonight and just do the tight side and then see how it feels. And the last thing you need to do in terms of your body is you need to have some core strength. Again, go back to that sitting trot. We need to have a core. We need to be able to whoo, into that saddle, suck into that saddle and stay connected with our horse and, and our seat bones plugged into the horse's back, which requires that core strength. So I know while I'm not riding, I'm thinking about how do I keep my fitness up? How do I keep my suppleness up? And how do I keep my core strength up? Then when it comes to the mind connection, I think about, okay, um, <clears throat> I need to make sure that my mind is strong. And how I do that and positive and optimistic and, and um, not reactive, not emotional, not angry, frustrated, sad, all those emotions can um, definitely hamper my riding. So I do that by making sure that I'm really engaging in goal setting, really thinking about, sure, the goals have changed. <laughs> Hands up who thinks 2020, like anyone who set goals for 2020, of course they've changed and that's okay. But what are my goals for 2022, 2028, 2030? 38. By projecting, and of course, I don't know what the future looks like. Who knows? No one knows. But by focusing on the goal setting, we can make sure that we have a future that we are working towards. I also am very, very into visualization. Uh, there's been so many studies that show uh, if you visualize, you can improve your performance. There was a study they did with basketballers. Group A had to do, practice their basketball every hour. They practiced drills and they practiced getting the ball in the hoop. Practi uh, group B, practiced an hour a day but only in their minds only by visualizing themselves putting the ball in the hoop and dribbling the ball and group c didn't practice now of course group c didn't improve after a month group a improved but the biggest improvement was group b and why would that be they didn't do anything physically but when they visualized they never missed they never did it wrong they always got the ball in the basket they always bounced the ball perfectly so that allowed their brain and their neural connection of their body and mind to figure out what it had to do, and therefore, when it came time to execute again, they were much better performers. And there's been many studies proving that with golf and with so many sports. So again, I'm like, beautiful, because I, I, I am a, a pretty lazy person. I love my couch. This is my blanket. I just sit here. I'm, I'm just so happy and content here. So I'm really excited that I can sit here with my blanket on the couch and visualize me going through my perfect Grand Prix test or whatever test it is for you and actually improve my writing. Now am I saying, cool, just sit on the couch, do nothing, visualize, and you'll be a Grand Prix dressage rider in, in 12 months? No. But there is things you can do to improve your writing. If you always had a bit of a sticky trot canter transition, do 100 trot canter transitions transitions in your brain every single day for the next 30 days, things will change. And then when it comes to your spirit connection, again, being that, I call it the Zen master, to have no past, no future, and just in ever, ever moments of now, ever present moments of now, that is being the Zen master, that is um, uh, dissociating from your body, from your human, from your human confines, and just being. Now I'm the least woo woo person out there. I'm not, I, I'm not really into being, <laughs> but I am aware when I ride my best, when I'm in the zone, which I do firmly believe, believe in, that there, I can access parts of the zone when I meditate. So there's a meditation component as well that you need to think about of how can I um, get into that space where there's no past, no future, where there is no emotion, where I'm me, but I'm also not me where I'm the ever evolved part of me, where I'm, I'm, I'm connected to something bigger than me. Now, everyone's got different religious beliefs, so that's my best way of putting it. You're just connected to something bigger than you. And I, um, again, don't, don't I, I'm not gonna even get into religious beliefs, but I do believe that there's something bigger out there um, than little old me. Phil's obsessed at the moment with um, astrophysics and he's telling me that <clears throat> this star that we were looking at is 650 light years old. And he was telling me how long ago that light left. Light years away, sorry, Phil. Um, <clears throat> see, my brain can't even wrap my head around the concepts of how big our universe is. So, side note. Um, but that's, that's what our connection is about. How can I improve my body, mind, spirit connection on all those levels so I can improve my writing performance? 
I'm super excited to, to share it with you today. I hope it's given you something to think about and given you some ideas while you're in lockdown that you, maybe you could work on your fitness or maybe you could work on your visualization or maybe you could work on certain things. I would also love to, I've, I, all I am is thinking about you guys. So I've created a free seven day train from home training train from home training. That's right. So you don't need your horse. You don't need to leave your couch. And it's a seven day completely free training. My gift to you while we're all in lockdown. And I just want to help you guys get through this and improve your riding. In this seven day training, we're going to th go through each pillars of equinection at a deeper level so you can understand them more and really take them into your life. It doesn't take any longer than 10 minutes. I, I don't want it to be this hour long study thing. It's 10 minutes of your life to improve your riding exponentially after those seven days. So that's my free gift to you. You can check it out, click the link on or around this video and uh, register for the free training. Can't wait to see you in it. Again, all my love and, and encouragement and support is just mwah, radiating out to you. Please contact me and my team if you need anything horse related or not. And um, sending you love, I'll see you guys soon. So trust that helps. Remember if you guys need any help with steps, procedures, strategies, recipes, how do you do A, how do you do B, how do you do C, I've got a free training class that tells you all about creating a dressage system that works for you. Go check it out on the link below.